The hot tub photo is undeniably the most controversial picture to ever appear in the history of college basketball. And yet it pales in comparison to how the media spends millions of dollars every year to acquire public attention, which partially explains how the persuasive spinners of truth thoughtfully dramatize information while carefully balancing our First Amendment rights. America is hypnotized by this death hour, news that for 60 minutes is respected as the truth. These make you or break you networks are very much alive because current events have become entertainment. Hello, my name is Lamont Sudbury and this is the untold story behind the hot tub photo. I am the loving son of American artist, sculptor, and performer Montine. Years ago, I made a serious decision that affected many people. My actions produced one of the biggest stories in the history of college basketball. I fought behind the scenes while knowing the future of one of the most successful families in the history of music. The hot tub photo is a small chapter in a complex and larger story. The story surrounds Montine, an artist who helped transform Las Vegas into a themed destination resort. This chapter begins with Jerry Tarkanian, the once head basketball coach of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. The subplot in this episode is the fixer, a cool guy suspected of controlling the outcome and play college basketball games, and as the plot thickens, it is highlighted by stunning moments in entertainment that include Latoya Jackson and Michael Jackson, which could explain how the spinster Jack Gordon could be the mastermind behind Michael Jackson's pedophile problems. What's intriguing is how a controversial basketball coach and one of the greatest families in music unknowingly became intertwined. Professionally, they're not. But coincidentally, the megalomania that caused their misfortunes is a man that is notorious for his manipulation and intimidation while conducting business, a man that personifies the meaning of swindler and shark. And this is the scandalous criminal, Jack Gordon. Because of Jack Gordon, my actions inadvertently triggered Tarkanian's downfall. Why Gordon himself intentionally instigated the Latoya and Michael Jackson scandals. And how does the great Montine fit into all this? The truth behind the hot tub photos is the answer. By a chain of incredible events that would end Montine's life, divide a city, and produce scandal, the truth behind the hot tub photo connects all the dots. It started back in the fall of 1968. Jack Gordon was introduced to Montine during the early years at Circus Circus in Las Vegas, Nevada. Gordon ran some arcades under the permanent big top, while Montine took on the monumental task of creating the heroic-sized statues that once embraced the front promenade area of this new enterprise on the Strip. In 1980, Gordon finished a jail term for attempting to bribe the then chairman of the Nevada Gaming Commission, Harry Reid, the now Senator Harry Reid of Nevada. After making some money in crime and the massage parlor business, Gordon set his attention on conquering Hollywood. First, he wanted to decorate his home in Beverly Hills, California with fantastic murals by Montine. Many believed Montine to be one of America's greatest artists. So it was just natural that Gordon would want his work but at what price? It is well known that Gordon didn't pay for this expensive art, resulting in a lawsuit against him by the artist. The litigation went on for years. Gordon met Latoya Jackson during this time, and soon after created a plan to get involved with her family. The Jacksons, mainly Joe Jackson, are embarrassed about their association with Jack Gordon. Because of bad business between Joe and Jack, Jack Gordon vowed to destroy Michael Jackson. He first gained control of Latoya Jackson's management agreement, and the rest is history. The litigation against Gordon and Montine was long-winded, and soon an event began that changed my perspective on life. Montine passed away in my arms after a four-year fight for his life, leaving my mother 
with nothing but the art he poured his soul into. I swore to my father I would make things right. Soon I discovered the private truth, what some knew and were afraid to report. Gordon capitalized on people's vices. He was obsessed with exploiting the Jackson family's private life. As Gordon, the Svengali, wooed Latoya Jackson and her family, I sought to inform the public about this immoral plan. What would develop in the near future was a scandalous book on the Jackson family, the famous Latoya Playmate spread, and the beginning of Michael Jackson's troubles. Then in March of 1989, the same month of my father's death, Time magazine published a story about a man they called The Fixer. That's when I went to a reporter at the Las Vegas Review Journal for help. Unfortunately, the paper wasn't interested in what I was pitching. Not until I had something they wanted. It wasn't until May of 1991 that I again approached the same newspaper. This time I had something they wanted. That was the hot tub photo, the famous picture that ended Jerry Tarkanian's rule at UNLV as head basketball coach. Motivated by the action of justice, the need to attack Jack Gordon before he ruins the Jackson family, and because of my promise to my father, I made the call that changed my life, Jerry Tarkanian's and Jack Gordon's. This arrangement would become the biggest story in the history of UNLV basketball. The infamous and costly hot tub photo is one mixed with opportunity, exploitation, and scandal, used by many to exploit personal and professional agendas. Citizens in the Las Vegas community, faculty members from the university, plus some ambitious political candidates like Lonnie Hammergren for lieutenant governor and Jan Jones for mayor, for example, began pontificating about the origins of the then scandal of the century, the hot tub photo. Within this picture is Richard Perry, who from the Time Magazine story was known as the Fixer. In 1984, he was convicted for conspiring to commit sports bribery in what was called the infamous Boston College point shaving scandal. And now, because of me, he would become more infamous in the hot tub photo. Also in this picture were three starting players from the number one college basketball team in the nation, David Butler, Moses Scurry, and Anderson Hunt. That was bad news for Tarkanian and the university. Perry entertained these players all the time. He did this for more than money because he took an interest in helping underprivileged athletes who had great talent but no future. So that's what his attorney would claim. What the hot tub photo represented was more than some NCAA violation. It explicitly showed the backdrop of a part of our society, the rules of engagement and how the real world can sometimes work. Perry was a bad influence everyone feared with connections to organized gambling and the mob. To me, he was a small player compared to Gordon. Perry never killed anyone that I knew of, or backed out of a contract. He never made a play to destroy a career like Gordon did to Michael Jackson. What was the wrong going on here was the private crime that takes place in America. If you're on the winning team, it doesn't matter how you succeed, as long as the I'm getting in your pocket truth is never seen. It's obvious who was truly in control while the athletes play. Let's just say the act of sports and entertainment in this pool was a distraction, as some affluent people in society made serious deals that privately manipulated the game. But the real criminal in this arena is people like Jack Gordon. The local media, powered by the rich, went into overdrive to protect their interests by publishing respected people's words to hide the damaging truth. This created the spin that created the controversy. The NCAA had been in a battle with Tarkanian for most of his Division I career. The hot tub photo would only add fuel to a pre-existing flame. The fact is, Tarkanian's problem with the NCAA stems way back to Long Beach State for recruiting violations. In 1977, he was on probation for questionable practices 
whatever that means. Nevertheless, it's puzzling how in 1998, seven years after the hot tub photo appeared, the NCA settled out of court paying Tark $2.5 million. It just goes to show you the hot tub photo didn't help the NCAA and remains a scandal, partly because of this story that has never been told. By creating controversy, it, it hides the truth about how and why the photo appeared. Three times I tried to contact Jerry. The first time he hung up on me. My intentions were to explain that the picture never came from the university and that there was no conspiracy concerning how the photo made its way to the paper. But that didn't set with his evaluation of the circumstances. If Tarkanian was listening to the news, there was no way he was going to believe in the truth. Besides, from my perspective, Tarkanian was just a patsy. Not in a foolish sense, just one that bears all the blame. And incidentally, Tarkanian resigned as longtime head coach at UNLV because of the hot tub photo. Where there is smoke, there is fire. I was helpless to change the arrangement I made with the paper that changed our lives. And what about Robert Maxson, the then president of UNLV? Maxson had no clue as to what was really taking place. He had some power, but he was always around after the fact. And it was crazy how the press played the coach and him against each other, making ridiculous claims regarding their involvement in the hot tub photo. Again, the photo became an opportunity. Sad, in 1994, Maxson also resigned. Forgotten. I never sold the negative. A front page story on Jack Gordon was what I got. I used this article to approach the Jacksons, and that's what I did. For one time only was my request. I outlined the arrangement that would send many running in circles, and still today people are reporting a spin on this event. The RJ would get a copy of this picture. In exchange, they would do the story on Jack Gordon. I retained the rights on the photo, being the owner of the film. I requested that A.D. Hopkins, an investigative reporter and friend of mine, do both stories. My name was to remain anonymous, magazine out, and no copies of the picture were to be made without my permission. The newspaper agreed to this, but they still insisted that I accept $400 for the photo. For obvious reasons, the money would appear to be an arrangement. To the people in the know, the hot tub photo was the beginning of the end for Tarkanian and my life as we knew it in Las Vegas. Out of control, that picture was syndicated to over 265 publications worldwide. Soon after the article came out on Jack Gordon, I started working with the Jackson family. They were happy to see that someone had the guts to go after Gordon. I secretly talked to LaToya and helped her get away from him. Then, a Las Vegas newspaper posted a reward for the identity of the person that gave the photo to the paper from the university. It was ironic to me. I was on television informing everybody about Jack Gordon. I went along with the dance, knowing that one day my story would take the lead. In the wake of all this, I created a novel, Montine's Inferno. And now HBO is producing a documentary on UNLV's Running Rebels. It will air on the 12th of March during March Madness. Ross Greenberg, the president of HBO Sports, gave George Roy and Steve Stern the go-ahead to create this project. They contacted me for a copy of the picture, offering a very small amount of money. Max Siegel, head of rights and clearances for HBO, offered me a short $300. I declined the offer, thinking that's like leaving a waiter a penny after a great meal. What's needed to be done, I explained, was that their story should include the truth behind the picture that printed a million words. How a photograph destroyed lives and ended careers and was used to promote certain agendas truly became a source of propaganda. That was my fee. Amazing how it may seem, HBO has no interest in the truth concerning this costly picture. Understanding, it really isn't a sports story and doesn't fit into their spin. 
the truth that explains that there was no conspiracy concerning the delivery of this photo. Montine, Tarkanian, and the Jackson family, their work are all victims of a disposable society. What will our legacies be? Montine's artwork will endure time and be a wonderful doorway to our future's past. Tarkanian will go down in history as the controversial coach, Michael Jackson, the talented singer. What the hot tub photo truly represents is the confidential corruption that takes place in our society every day. How our professional lives are interrupted by the madness and ego of a greedy few. The photo represents the price we sometimes pay for success and that the choices we make to win are sometimes unmanageable, unforgiving, and our immortal souls. The invoice we wage at the beginning of any dream is at the end sometimes a disappointment because we sold out to the highest bidder. Too often the winner is saddened by the doors they opened, plagued by lost time and tormented by the unchangeable past because they traded their talent in exchange for what was understood to be success. Our culture needs to protect everyone from the Jack Gordons that covertly and unscrupulously profit from our talent and sweat. I'm Lamont Sudbury, and that's the way it was for now.